Although Israel does not have an embassy here in Cambodia, the two countries have maintained a good diplomatic relations and cooperation. So first of all, what can you share about the current state of diplomatic relations and cooperation between Israel and Cambodia? So good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity uh, to meet with you and to speak a little bit about our bilateral relations. Uh, I think that uh, Cambodia and Israel uh, have growing diplomatic relations. Uh, I believe that uh, I see a huge potential to uh, develop those relations even more uh, in fields like agriculture, water, um, um, even other sectors as well. Uh, and I believe that the collaboration between our sides can grow uh, and we can find together, uh, we can explore and find more and more uh, opportunities for the benefit of our two people. Regarding the trade, what do you think of the current state between Cambodia and Israel? Do you foresee an increase in trade and investment between the two countries in the coming years? Uh, I truly believe that we will see an increase of uh, trade and commercial relations between our two sides. Um, I believe that a lot of what we do together uh, at the moment uh, is around agriculture. We have quite many Israeli agriculture companies that operate here. Let it be a, a dairy farm, a black pepper, a, or avocado plants, a, maybe some other food processing, a, a, I would say, plants that are now being, you know, kind of developed. A, but I truly believe that when I look at the scope, I believe that business people uh, from Cambodia do not know enough about opportunities in Israel. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, business people from Israel do not know enough about the opportunities here in Cambodia. I believe that our, emb our embassy, although we are not stationed here in Phnom Penh, but the fact that we are responsible from, from Bangkok to cover Cambodia as well, um, I believe that we are kind of a, a bridge between uh, our two countries and we need to explore the opportunities uh, to enlarge, uh, and enlarge the scope. We have a very active uh, Cambodia-Israel Chamber of Commerce uh, here in Phnom Penh. Uh, they are active in trying to find um, all sorts of activities uh, delegations that they take to Israel. I hope to see trade delegations coming here as well. I hope to see ministers from Cambodia visiting Israel later this year. Again, trying to explore what are the, the, the real sectors that are right uh, for collaboration. I truly believe that one of the strengths of Israel uh, is the field of innovation. And when you speak about innovation, it can be innovation in everything. Innovation in agriculture, innovation in, uh, in banking, innova in innovation in water technologies. Uh, Israel is a small country. We call ourselves the startup nation. We have a lot of innovation, as I said, in many sectors. And I hope, because I see and I look at Cambodia today, which is a young nation, uh, with a lot of entrepreneurial spirit, like in Israel. Uh, there is a lot of interest, I would say, and I hope uh, to explore and develop uh, everything we can between our two countries when it comes to trade. What specific initiative or activity can be expected during your three days visit here in Cambodia in order to enhance the bilateral relationship between the two countries? So, of course, as I said, I, I always look to explore and to find something new. Um, one thing that I want to keep, and I'm very happy that we have, is the, the students that go from Cambodia. We have about 100, uh, 40, 400 sorry, and 60 students, agricultural students, that go to Israel every year to study. And the whole program, I, I believe, is very unique. And why is it unique? Because one day a week, they all study their... They are students, they come on their second year of university here. So one day a week they study in university with the best professors in Israel uh, studying about agriculture. The rest of the week they have hands-on experience. They don't study in classrooms, but they work with the Israeli farmers and they learn how to use new technologies, mm -hmm. new techniques, 
what are the benefits, where are the challenges. And they come back to, to uh, Cambodia after 11 months. They have a lot of new knowledge and they want to take it. Some of them, as I said, entrepreneurs, they start businesses, uh, they want to use their knowledge. So if you ask me, this is one thing that I hope to keep. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want to mention, and uh, with a lot of appreciation, um, we haven't mentioned that, but we in Israel are in at war since uh, 7th of October, when uh, Hamas, the terrorist organization, started a very a monstrous uh, attack against Israelis. We lost more than 1,200 people. Uh, we had uh, more than 250 hostages in Gaza. And those students, the Cambodian students, some of them were also in those uh, dangerous areas. Uh, unfortunately, uh, one of the students uh, were killed in, uh, was killed in one of the kibbutzim. Uh, but still, the government of Cambodia, on the one hand, was really worried yes. uh, about the welfare and, and the well-being, I would say, of the students. But on the other hand, uh, they didn't call them to come back to Cambodia because they knew and they were in touch with us very closely. They knew that the government of Israel is doing everything we can to protect the students that stayed in Israel, to actually move them to safe zones, safe areas. And ever since, all of the students, almost all of the students stayed in Israel. They continue their studies, they continue their work, and they study a lot. So I'm very grateful to the government of Cambodia. And I think that this is one way uh, of a, a good example of how the two governments, together with the universities in Israel, work together and for the benefit of the people, for the benefit of the Cambodians. Yeah. Uh, I would like to add that, uh, unfortunately, the one student that was uh, killed in Kibbutz uh, Karomia in Israel, uh, this is very tragic, uh, and every loss of life, like, you know, it doesn't matter, Israeli, Cambodian, Thai, American, it is so tragic and so unnecessary. Uh, I would like to pay my respect uh, to the family mm -hmm. uh, of the students, and tomorrow morning I'm going to visit them. I'm going to see them, I'm going to tell them how sorry I am. Uh, and although Israel is not by any way responsible to what happened, we treat all the victims, uh, including the people that were killed, including the injured, including the kidnapped. Uh, it doesn't matter if they were Israelis or foreigners, we treat them the same. They receive compensation, a monthly compensation, which is quite high. Uh, and the parents of this uh, unfortunate uh, student will receive compensation for the rest of their lives. So for sure it's not going to compensate uh, for the loss of their son, but at least we want to make sure that they live you know, comfortably and they don't need to worry about employment and how they are going to provide for their family. Uh, because we know that this the kind of tragedy, sometimes it's hard to heal for that, from that and continue with their lives. Um, so, yes, I think that both of our governments did everything we could in order to make sure that the students are safe in Israel. Shifting focus to the recent conflict between Israel and Palestine, what is your assessment of the efforts made by other governments in ensuring the safety of their citizens and students in Israel? Additionally, what comments do you have regarding the royal government of Cambodia's effort in working with the Israeli government to evacuate our citizens and students to safe areas? Since the beginning of the war, we have been working very closely with uh, the Cambodian government through your, the Cambodian embassy in Bangkok, through the honorary consul that you have in uh, Israel, uh, through the institutions, the academic institutions, universities, where the students learn uh, directly. We believe that there was no need to evacuate them, and I fully support the decision of the government of Cambodia to keep the students in Israel. And honestly, I even appreciate, I can say very honestly, uh, what uh, Hun Sen, the previous uh, prime minister, said that, uh, you know, Israel is a friend, and when a friend is in need, you don't leave them. So we appreciate the fact that, and we know that it's not easy to make a decision to let the students stay there. 
um, it's not, we don't take it for granted. And of course, students that wanted to go back, they went back. Nobody was forced by any government to stay. But I'm happy that everyone realized that we are doing everything we can to protect the students. And up to now, I can say knock wood, uh, everyone is safe. And the, the war now is in Gaza. There, it is no longer in the Israeli area. Uh, and hopefully everyone will get back home sound and safe uh, when they finish this year. Yeah. Addressing the ongoing cooperations in sending Cambodian students to study agricultural skill in Israel, is there a plan to continue this collaboration in the coming years? As I said, in recent years, uh, in the COVID year, there was even one year that we sent 650, much more than 100. Uh, and in recent years, we sent 450, 460. We truly hope that next year, 24-25, we will see the same amount of students coming. Uh, the Israeli um, professors and the Israeli farmers really appreciate and enjoy working with the Cambodian workers. And they are not workers, they are students, I'm sorry. They really enjoy working with them. They really enjoy their academic uh, capabilities. Uh, the only thing we ask, we request, is that they speak English. Because if they cannot speak English, they cannot sit in class and understand the, like, the academic uh, part. And for us, this is an integral part. It's very important for us that everyone understands and has also very high academic achievements. But uh, the, stu the students are very much appreciated. So from our point of view, we hope that next year we will see the same amount of over 450 students from Cambodia coming to Israel. Last but not least, as a non-resident ambassador to Cambodia, how dedicated are you to enhancing the relationship between Cambodia and Israel for the benefits of both nations? What specific areas are you prioritizing in threatening this cooperation during your mandate? So the reason I'm here is because I believe that the relations between our two countries uh, are very important. Uh, and since we don't have a resident embassy here, I really and truly hope to be here uh, much more than I, I come. I like, I like coming here. I, like, I really enjoy Cambodia and I like the Cambodian people. Uh, and I really believe that, again, as I said at the beginning, the potential is very uh, substantial. Uh, one thing that I would like uh, to start exploring uh, um, this time is the possibility to bring uh, workers uh, agricultural uh, workers from Cambodia to work in Israel. Uh, I think that uh, the situation in Israel, uh, of course, you cannot ignore it. But at the same time, I know that Israel is a, a very desired destination uh, for, many com for many people from around the world, many workers, they regard Israel as a destination that they really want to come and work in. Uh, so I truly hope we are going to start uh, some sort of official negotiations soon uh, between uh, our two governments. Uh, we want to make sure uh, that we protect uh, the, the workers that will come to Israel. Uh, so we want to have a, an MOU between our two governments, between the Ministry of Labor of Cambodia and the Ministry of Interior uh, in Israel. Uh, hopefully these negotiations will start soon. Uh, and I hope that this visit will set the beginning for that. Uh, and hopefully, quite soon, we will be able to start uh, sending people to Israel. As I said for the students, I think that um, at the end, after they spend a few years in Israel working in agriculture, when they come back here to Cambodia, it will benefit the workers, it will benefit their families, and it will benefit the whole uh, community where they live. And we hope to see that actually happening. Uh, I think this is going to be a very uh, important and fundamental um, stage uh, between our two countries. Uh, and hopefully, you know, Israel is at war now. So most of our uh, attention is diverted to the war, uh, to the tragedy that uh, Israel has been experiencing in the past over 100 days. Uh, we still have um, more than 130, 136 hostages that are being kept by Hamas, by this terrorist organization. So our, maybe our top priority 
uh, is, is the war, unfortunately, and return, the safe return of the hostages home. Uh, and we hope to get uh, the support from countries all around the world uh, to Israel's right to defend its citizens, its territory, uh, and to bring all of those uh, hostages home safe and sound uh, as soon as possible. So, so that's what we are hoping. And hopefully we, are, we will be in better days uh, and we can actually uh, plan more delegations, trade delegations coming here to Cambodia, going from Cambodia to Israel, uh, hoping really for better days.